Hello, it's Bailey and welcome back to my channel. I am here a little bit late to give you my March wrap up. This is happening so late because I made the decision to kind of go easy on myself in April and I've decided to only post one video a week in April. So that is what to expect from me this month, but I am very excited to be bringing you my wrap up. I essentially will be sharing some stats with you and then going and telling you my ranking from least favorite to most favorite. Uh, to start with my stats, I keep putting this graph in and then not explaining what it is, but basically what this is is the center column in each is this month and then the darker gray to the left is my 2022 average and then the lighter gray to the right is uh, my average so far for 2023. Just so you can compare how my stats are stacking up against how I usually perform. So as I talk about these first couple stats, you can look at that. Let me grab my planner in which I always read these off of. In March, I read 13 books, which was 2,935 pages. Uh, I physically read for 40 hours, which puts my average reading speed per hour at 73.4 pages an hour. And then this was my largest audiobook listening month of the year so far. I listened to 43 hours of audiobooks. So that puts my breakdown for the month at seven physical books, two ebooks, and four audiobooks. I owned nine of these, three I borrowed from my library, and I did get scribbed this month just for one specific book, and so I, one of them was from Scribd. <laughs> my genre breakdown is very vast this month, I think. Uh, I read five mysteries, two fantasies, two nonfictions, two adventure, one horror, and one historical. For age range, I had eight adult, one new adult, one young adult, and then three children's. And for when these books were published, I had three published before 2010, four published 2010 to 2019. I had my largest category this month, which I'm very happy to see because in my mind, this means I was reading books that are on my shelves. Um, I had five in the 2020 to 2022 category and then one 2023 release. You're about to see that I had a very bad reading month based on my star rating breakdown and average star rating for the month. I had one DNF, I had six two stars, four three stars, and two four stars. No five stars. <laughs> That makes my average rating for the month a 2.88. Yikes. So let's go ahead and get into what these terrible books were. <laughs> they weren't terrible. Really, I had no one stars and only one DNF. Otherwise, they were just like a lot of two stars, let's be honest. <laughs> Okay, starting with my DNF, I have Two Girls Down by Louisa Luna. I thought the mystery in this was interesting, but I did not care about the like detective characters we were following. I was just kind of blah, so I decided to put it down. So getting into my two stars, uh, starting with Somebody's Daughter by Ashley C. Ford. I didn't think that, that, that this was that good of a memoir and I don't think it was at all what it was pitched to be. Um, overall, I just didn't like get a message from this. Then I have The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon. I felt like this was um, a fantasy book, sci-fi, that you were t assumed to know, like some background knowledge that I didn't necessarily know. Um, so for a lot of this book, I felt like I was in the dark and I was kind of waiting for it to be explained and it never was. Although I am participating in a read-along for this series and I probably will give the series uh, another try. I'll give it at least one more book. Next I have Just One Look by Lindsay Cameron. I just thought this was a fairly basic thriller um, centering around the plot of somebody who is tasked with reading other people's emails and getting maybe too interested. Uh, then we have Stage Fright on a Summer Night by Mary Pope Osborne. This was a dud for me. <laughs> then I had Unseen by Karen Slaughter. This was a series I previously had said. I wasn't really sure I was going to continue or not, but Squash That series gets me every time and these are easy to listen to on audiobook, so I did. Um, I will say I did enjoy this installment more than I had enjoyed 
um, the few previous. I think I do just need to continue to read these, you know, periodically and not like close together by any means. I'm not trying to rush through the series, but I probably will at some point keep going. <laughs> And my final two star was the Shelf This Book Club pick for the month, which was picked by Lizzie from Lizzie's Liter Literary Life. I think I'm in the minority rating it this low, uh, but that was Briefly a Delicious Life by Nell Stevens. I just as a person overall struggle with uh, like the way this was written. I do think it was well writ written, but I started to lose interest throughout um, and I just wasn't that interested in the characters and it didn't really really go anywhere so in my mind it'll probably be fairly forgettable but I know for others this was like a standout five star book this is definitely a me issue <laughs> then for my three stars I have the carnivorous carnival by lemony snicket I don't really have anything to say about this I'm not particularly enjoying this read through I read one <laughs> Then I have Good Morning Gorillas by Mary Pope Osborne. I listened to the audiobook of The Spite House by Johnny Compton and it fell in this three star range so it was a pretty decent read. Again I do think this is like a horror that's going to be fairly um, forgettable for me although I am still excited to listen to the to the discussion for the Literally Dead book club this month. I'm actually wearing my Literally Dead book club uh t-shirt but you can't really see it <laughs> i do think if you're someone who wishes that certain uh thrillers that tease being paranormal and then are not paranormal like if you wish they were uh that this is a good recommendation <laughs> and then my final three star was tower of dawn by sarah j mass this is a reread through the series for me which means i only have one book left to go for this reread uh, and very similarly to the first time I read through this series, it kind of declines at the end for me. And reading this one, I was really just craving being back with everybody. Um, while I am a Kale stan, I do think that this is too long considering it really shrinks the world by just choosing to follow him and the people surrounding him for, you know, like 700 pages. <laughs> Then finally for my two four stars, I have, this feels like so long ago when I read this because it was the very first thing I read in the month, uh, but I have I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. Overall, I do think this was a very good memoir and very interesting look into like child actors, actresses, and kind of how that even comes to be. Although I have said that I am surprised how widely recommended this is with the troubling like subtopic that this centers around which is mostly about eating disorders and just like really bad self-image and mother-daughter relationships so if this is something that you keep seeing recommended and you are interested in it I would definitely go in knowing that at least to me this felt mostly like a book about eating disorder and then my favorite book of the month I think that when I included this in my spooktober vlog I maybe didn't um, talk about it highly enough but I really did enjoy this book. It is not a five star but uh, that is Playing Nice by J.P. Delaney and this centers around two families who find out when their kids are two that they were switched at birth through a like kind of emergency situation and so these children are now two and these families are basically having to decide whether they are going to keep the child that they have been raising or like get their biological child back this is like a court case type mystery novel so if that sounds interesting to you at all and you enjoy mysteries told that way I definitely would recommend this one and that is all the books that I read this month but I did realize halfway through talking about those that um I never mentioned what I bought this month and I didn't technically buy anything this month but it was my birthday so I was gifted some things there's one thing that I picked out for myself when Kayla was here uh Kayla Chris I and Mabel <laughs> all went to a half price books and so I'm counting this as a book that Chris bought for me for my birthday even though I did pick it out myself and so I acquired The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon which you just heard me say I gave two stars so maybe not a good decision on my part uh, but it was at half price books so didn't spend too much money on it it came from my bank account but I'm counting it as a gift <laughs> 
And then I had two very dear booktube friends who sent me books from my wish list uh, in the month of March for my birthday. Firstly, Danielle from Bukhara sent me something I'm very excited to get to, which is uh, Duke Most Wicked by Lenora Bell. I just read the second book in this series and she had to have ordered uh, this for my wish list like within days of me adding it to the wish list. So very excited to get to this one and historical romance is my happy place. And then Amy from A Star Reads, uh, I love that she sent this to me because she sent me a sequel to a book that we read together because it was a Shelf This book club pick. She sent me the sequel to Finlay Donovan, so she sent me Finlay Donovan Knocks Him Dead. And again, I'm excited to uh, not only continue a series, but I know a lot of people after book club did continue, and so I will be able to chat with people about this book as well. So thank you so much to my friends for sending those to me. That is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today and I will see you again very soon. Bye!